as I mentioned, I have personal knowledge that Pastor Lloyd Goodwin, the dictator pastor of Gospel Assembly over on, I believe it was Meredith, uh, preached against this modern-day Phariseeism. So the elders there, no doubt, would have counseled Brother Paul that he might not have fit in there or felt comfortable at Gospel Assembly on Meredith. And from personal experience, when these elders counsel, saying, you might not feel comfortable here uh, with the big welcome everyone sign outside, they might mean in doublespeak, oh, we don't feel comfortable with you. But I confess, I digress. By an aside, it's a habit of mine, forgive me. 2 Corinthians 12, 13. For what is it wherein ye were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you? Forgive me this wrong. So in the tradition and spirit of the Apostle Paul, when I do these terrible asides, my friend, forgive me, a Paul again, the dear pesky fellow. Well, fun is fun. Uh, by this time, you might survive, surmise that I am less than thrilled by religion or what I've been brought up in. Uh, you would be correct. I will attempt then to confine myself to Scripture, a topic that I know very well. After all, it is authoritative, isn't it? To really understand religion in the modern sense, we must turn to the origin of its founding, just as in order to understand the Constitution and what it should be, we would turn to the origin of its founding with our fathers in 1776. But we cannot do this with Abraham, Abraham, for he is Romans 4.12 and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. So again, uh, Abraham would not fit into religion, for he was of faith. Uh, Romans 4.16, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. No, we shouldn't look to Abraham, not him, not Abraham, but rather another fellow, a fellow who formed religion across the entire earth, the first organized movement, established church, it might be said. Uh, this fellow, who is he, you ask? Nimrod. In Hebrew, Nimrod means rebel or rebellion. In history, Nimrod is identified by theologians as chapter 1, how the mystery religion was formulated. Nimrod worshipped the pagan sun god named Moloch. And if you investigate the scriptures, you will find out what the creator, redeemer, savior thought of that particular religion. So Nimrod married his mother, Semiramis, and she became the queen of Babylon, indeed the queen of heaven. It was the very terms used of it by Christian theologians meet us again in as the mystery Babylon, the mystery religion of Babylon, so that we can identify how that religion evolved to this very day. Therefore, religion comes from the mysteries from Babylon. Nimrod, king of Shinar, was according to the book of Genesis and book of Chronicles, the son of Cush, the great-grandson of Noah. The Bible states that he was a mighty hunter before the Lord and began to be mighty in the earth, Wikipedia. Nimrod descends from pork, just kidding. Just kidding, parents. Semiramis, Cush, grandparents, Ham. Children, Asherad, Hunar, Megor, 
great grandchildren, Ru, Yusel, Salaf, Haza, May, Veth, Almoadad, more grandchildren, Peleg, and Joktan, uncles, foot, Canaan. Also, this man was known as Gilgamesh. Who was Gilgamesh? Gilgamesh, ancient history encyclopedia. Gilgamesh is the semi-mystic king of Uruk, best known as the Epic of Gilgamesh, written in the century 2150 through 1400 BCE. He's the great Samaritan Babylonian poet. Who was Gilgamesh? Hero, king, and character study. Com. Some historians believe that Gilgamesh was a real king of the city of Uruk between 2700 and 2500 BCE. Gilgamesh on a tablet. According to the story, Gilgamesh was two-thirds god and one-third man. His mother was the goddess Ninsun, and his father, Legal Banda, was the half-god of Uruk. Okay, once more. What does scripture say? The final authority. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 8, And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. 10, 9. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Now, what Lord is this talking about? Wait not so fast. It is the Lord connected with scripture. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, that's all caps, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And First Chronicles, I believe it is, 110. And Cush begat Nimrod, he began to be mighty upon the earth. What did Nimrod establish upon the earth? Why religion? Let's see if I'm right. In Genesis uh, chapter 11. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shiner, where Nimrod's from. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, what our church is made out of, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for motor. This is the first time this is ever recorded. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name. What's on the name of these buildings? Names. Their name. The name of the people there. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord, this is the capitalized Lord, came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. Uh, this Lord, incidentally, is referring to Creator. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. They all have one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. And go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Uh, perhaps, obviously, the Lord, this Lord, uh, was not pleased with what was going on in this religious endeavor. So the Lord scattered them, in verse 8, abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Perhaps it might be questioned, with them scattered all over the face of the earth, how could they continue that on? Well, they took what they'd learned with them, obviously. Therefore, the name of it is called Babel, Babel, because the Lord all caps, there, did confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord, all caps, scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Who is this capped Lord spoken of here in Hidden Enigma? We shall see. What was this Tower of Babel, the first spoken of uh, synthetically, uh, uh, authentically, as a religious structure. What happened to the religion of Nimrod? Is there yet another faith spoken of? 
good questions. I'm glad that you thought of them. Join me next time on Exploring the Scriptures for Answers. Our topic today, Our Religion. Not my opinion. Mine do not count for much. But rather, we will explore the Scriptures for what is authoritative in defining religion and faith. Your own handbook, the Bible, or rather what it calls itself, inside, beyond the covers, it refers to itself as the scriptures and how they might guide us in our pursuit of truth. Daniel 10.21 But first I will tell you what is written. This is from the King James Bible. But first I will show thee which is noted in the scripture of truth, the only version ever authorized for the English-speaking people. Next time on Exploring the Scriptures.